Hello friends, my name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson. Welcome to church. I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church, and I'm so happy that you've joined us for worship this day. It's an exciting time. It's the season of Advent, and it starts this week. You see, Advent is an invitation. Uh, for many, it's the invitation to start getting to the Christmas spirit, to count down the days to that day of celebration, and to let the holiday transform everything around us. But there's a deeper and more profound invitation actually being given during the season of Advent. The invitation is to remember that we are heading for home. Or if we're not, if we've forgotten that there's a home toward which we to are to head, it is the invitation to long for the home we call the kingdom of God. It is where families reside, where peace resides, where justice abides, and hope will rise. Advent reminds us that we shouldn't be complacent about the way things are, not that we want to become angry or frustrated with what's going on and everything around us, but that we want to be those who look forward to something greater, something more than just on the horizon. Advent is the call to come home. It's a call to the kingdom. So let us now join together in worship and praise.
friends, this is Pastor Bruce, and this is my wife, Christy, and we're here to do the first Advent reading for this week. We have endured these past few years and know that there is more to face before us. We don't know if we have the strength to withstand what might be around the next corner, and we wonder who will stand with us, who will have our back, who will occupy our corner. Who is with us? That is what we begin to wonder these days. Who will light our way and chart our course? Who is on our side? Who will welcome us home again? Home. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of a branch that will be raised. Jesus spoke of a son of man that will, be, will descend. Both point to a hope, a hope that calls us home. Our true home, where we're welcomed and loved and included, where there is justice and equality and peace. It's time, this Advent season, to go home. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our strong hope that there is a way to go home, to the home in Christ, and it starts with us, and it starts here, and it starts now. It's time to go home. Friends, you can find all these resources, the candle, the readings, uh, the QR code to get there, all in your Advent boxes. We hope you'll continue to join us in the coming weeks.
friends, I'm Addie Lopes, and I'm the Preschool and Student Ministries Coordinator here at Jerome Church. This month, Jerome Kids are in a series called Played It, where they are hearing stories from the Old Testament and are following a step-by-step -step recipe to prepare for the loving relationship with God. Today they are learning about Step 4, leaving the results up to God. Each Sunday, Kids can access our weekly kids' worship and videos on On Demand on the Jerome Church YouTube channel, in the Jerome Kids Facebook group, and in Church Center app. This On Demand video resource is a way for kids to begin and continue their learning at home each week and stay connected to our Jerome Kids leaders and staff. Kids still can join in the large group Zoom time at 1030 on Sundays, and we are also offering in-person programming for kids ages zero through fifth grade on Sunday morning during our 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. in-person worship service. And continuing today, kids can still join in our new elementary Bible study meeting in person for kids in kindergarten through fifth grade at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. This study is called The Heart That Grew Three Sizes where kids can learn about their faith through the story of the Grinch. Kids can sign up through the link in today's video description, in our Facebook group, in the Church Center app, and on our website. Now, let's hear a message from Pastor Bruce as we begin a new series about coming home for Christmas. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Our first scripture passage can be found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line, he will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Our second reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them in this parable, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful of, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it, will become, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
I have to admit, I'm, I'm in a little bit of shock this week. It's, it's just a shock to me that Advent is starting. I look back and I go, where did the past few months go? It's been so busy. And, and I know, sure, the world has been giving us uh, hints about Christmas coming for months now, uh, especially in the stores. Uh, in Ohio, uh, where I live, the warm and heat of summer seems to have quickly faded to the crisp chill of winter. It's almost like fall didn't happen. And the only reason I know fall happened beyond the falling temperatures were the falling leaves. They fell to the ground and needed to be picked up and I finished up my yard work. The darkness of night comes a little earlier these days. The days have become a little more gray. And in Ohio, we've actually already experienced some ice and snow. And it's before Advent. All signs that winter has come and Christmas is almost here. It's happened so suddenly. But I felt like I missed the signs. Jesus, too, is telling us to look towards the signs in our scripture passage from Luke. I'm not sure how you receive this sort of thing on the first Sunday or the first week of Advent, but sometimes I think that folks are expecting to hear the uh, preliminaries of the Christmas stories. Maybe an angel announcement, maybe a song of transformation, maybe a dream or a journey or a royal decree, but certainly not people fainting with fear and foreboding from our scripture passage. I'm not sure I'm up for foreboding and fear. Yet, if we take a closer look at this scripture passage from Luke, uh, I don't believe Jesus actually means this prophecy, this thing that is to come has a sign of fear or foreboding. I believe Jesus is actually telling us to experience the opposite. It's not fear, it is hope. Look at the trees, Jesus says. He is telling us to look for signs of growth on those trees, even in a dying season, to look for signs of life, even in the dark and gray and dreary landscape in front of us. Stand up and raise your heads, he says to us. It is our natural instincts when things are looking down, when tough times come, uh, when it's gray and dark, we look down. We want to keep our heads down. But Jesus tells us the opposite. He says, raise them up, look up, to trust, to have confidence. He is telling us to pay attention that we have received a call, and it's a call to go home, to the home we long for, the home we hope for, the home we live for, to look for the kingdom. It's time to go home. Now that may seem a little tricky uh, any time of year, but with all the distractions that Christmas and the Advent season brings with them, it's even more difficult. Pay attention, Jesus says, but I have all these things that I have to get done. I have my to-do list. I have to get the tree up. I have to get the lights out. I have to plan the meal. Didn't Thanksgiving just happen and I already have to plan a feast for my family? Uh, I have to buy gifts. I have to get everything ready for the worship services that are coming up. I have to record sermons weeks in advance sometime to be prepared. I've got places to go, I've got people to see, I've got things to do. Pay attention, Jesus says. But, but to what? What am I supposed to pay attention? What are you supposed to pay attention to? What are we together looking for? At that first look of scriptures, are we, are we looking for the end times? I mean, don't get me wrong, but that's, that's not what I'm looking for. The folks all wrapped up in that kind of all, all that kind of end times apocalyptic gospels. If that's all they think about, that's all they do. They, they sometimes seem a little bit odd. Sometimes it just appears off-putting. It's a little bit out of touch. And frankly, they seem to have their priorities all messed up. I'm focused on loving God, loving neighbor, making disciples. 
the end times will come. I'll be prepared, but that's not my focus. Pay attention, Jesus says. Advent can pull us in so many different directions. It's so multi-layered. We stand here on the first Sunday of Advent and we long to celebrate, to look back over 2,000 years to the birth of the Christ child, our Savior, the coming Messiah, God incarnate in the flesh. And we long for the 25th of December where we will celebrate that and, and the Christmas Eve where we sing the songs and hear the story again of the birth of our saviors. We long to celebrate with the angels as they sing and where for that brief moment there was actually peace on earth just for that moment. But at the same time, the scriptures remind us that there is still hope that is coming. When peace on earth will last for eternity, Christ said he will come again. And that peace will last not just for a moment, but for all time. And so we have this dichotomy of looking back and looking forward, but there's even more. Jesus says, pay attention, stop and look around. Look back, look forward, look up, look down, look to your left and right, look all around you. Pay attention, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down. Don't miss the glimpse of the kingdom that arrived during this season because we will all receive glimpses of home, of the kingdom to come, God's kingdom. And it will often happen when we least expect it, these sightings of the Savior. It may be at a scheduled Zoom call when all your family who can't join together in one place but are out of state join together for a Zoom call and maybe share a meal or share prayers. Maybe it happens between prayers between friends, uh, the prayers of hope and love and peace. And maybe those moments of peace, even though they still may only be moments, maybe they just extend around the world, even just for the moment. Jeremiah prophesied, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Friends, at the beginning of this Advent, we have received a call, an invitation, and that call and invitation says that it's time to go home. It's time to go home by looking back. It's time to go home by looking forward, by looking around us. A call and an invitation to be ready, to make ready, and to see the kingdom. It's a time of hope. It's an invitation to go home. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.
It's good to be with you in worship today. My name is Sarah Merriweather and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome. Today we are beginning the season of Advent and are preparing together to celebrate the birth of our Savior this Christmas. During this worship series, we are exploring what it means to be home in the places that we live, but also finding a home for our faith. We are so glad that you have found a church home with us here at Jerome Church, and we want to walk with you as you take your next steps to commit to the ways that you worship, serve, and grow spiritually through the ministries and missions of this church. I want to invite you to open up your Church Center app so that you can connect to the tools for ministry and missions at Jerome Church right now and continue to have access to them throughout the week. If you don't have the app yet, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and follow the instructions below to connect with us. While you're in the app, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today. And take some time to explore the groups and other opportunities available to you in the app and also on our website. If you love Christmas movies like I do, I want to invite you to join in a brand new small group study for Advent called The Heart That Grew Three Sizes. This study will explore our faith through the story of the Christmas movie classic, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Pastor Bruce will be leading this four-week study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. beginning this Wednesday, December 1st, meeting in a hybrid, in-person, and online format. You can register through the link in today's video description on our website or in the Church Center app. This past Monday, our congregation served a warm Thanksgiving meal to more than 500 people through our partnership with the Church for All People in downtown Columbus. Thank you so much for your support of this meal through your donations of food items and by giving your time to prepare and serve the meal. This is just one of the ways that Jerome Church lives out the mission of loving God and loving people, not just at the holidays, but through our ongoing partnership and support of local missions like the Church for All People. This month, we are also supporting the Miracle on William Street event through our partnership with the Common Ground Free Store in Delaware. This year, Jerome Church is committed to providing at least 200 gifts for children for this event that serves hundreds of families in the local Delaware area at Christmas. Tomorrow, November 29th, is the last day to drop off gifts to Jerome Church, and we still need quite a few gifts to help us achieve our goal. Unwrapped gifts can be dropped off or delivered to Jerome Church tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can find more information about the Miracle on William Street in our app and on our website. Now, we are joined by Michelle Blackburn, who is going to share with us about how we can support another one of our local missions through a special Giving Tuesday event. Hello, my name is Michelle Blackburn, the missions coordinator for Jerome Church. The holiday season is fast approaching. In the midst of the holiday season where so many of the activities in our society center around material possessions, Giving Tuesday is a way to shift our focus onto how we can help others by loving God and loving people, the best deal of all. 
This Giving Tuesday, November 30th, we are focusing on raising funds to support our monthly ministry for Faith Mission. Faith Mission is one of the largest homeless shelters in Columbus, Ohio. Jerome Church has committed over the last several years to provide 150 sack lunches once a month. These sack lunches help provide a meal while our friends are working out in their community. In 2021, members of Jerome Church small groups packed 1,800 sack lunches for Faith Mission in downtown Columbus. This Giving Tuesday, you can help Jerome Church raise the 4,800 that is needed to fully fund 100% of the lunch packing events for Faith Mission in 2022. With the rising cost of products, your donation is needed more than ever. You can be a part of this life-changing mission by giving any amount this Giving Tuesday. Here are a few ways to give. Through the Church Center app, by scanning the QR code on the screen, texting GIVE to our number 614-587-7871, or through Jerome Church's Facebook fundraiser, or, or any other ways you give to Jerome Church by indicating Giving Tuesday. Thank you for your continued support and making a difference. Thanks, Michelle. Together, the people of Jerome Church are living the mission of loving God and loving people through the life-changing missions and ministries of this church, like our small group studies and our local mission partnerships. As we look ahead to Christmas and then to the new year, there is still time to complete your estimated giving card for 2022. This card can be completed and mailed to the church, or you can scan the QR code on the screen to complete your estimated giving card online. If you are giving your regular offering today, you can give electronically through the Give tab in the Church Center app, or if you're giving for the first time today, you can text the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. Giving is also available through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office, or you can mail a check to Jerome Church at the address that's on the screen below. Now, as we close out our time together on this first Sunday of Advent, our musicians are going to lead us in our closing song of worship. Thank you. 
It's been a wonderful time of worship together, and I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I pray for you a week filled with hope, and we look forward to connecting with you online and in person this week. Have a blessed week, friends. Hosanna, he reigns in the highest.